Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. You're very welcome to our preview show and we're looking ahead at the senior and intermediate quarterfinals coming up this weekend. A Philly McAvoy on here to talk about the senior championship and we'll hear from Barry Flynn, the care couple manager later on and he'll discuss the intermediate games as well. So Philly, four games, it's it's real championship season now. Um, it's all knockout from here on in of course. There's four games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Starting with Bally McNabb and Madden Friday night, crossing the Harps Saturday, Cleveland Clan Sunday, and then to the top it all off to Clan Iron and Silverbridge. So I suppose to start with, um, the four group winners obviously have had a three week break, while the the four teams coming through the playoffs have have had two weeks. So probably whoever wins these games, you're going to say all oh, the three weeks was an advantage, or well, they were sitting doing nothing for three weeks, so. We won't know if it's an advantage or not till after the games, probably. That's it. Like, and it's um, it's always a difficult one. Like for myself, as a goalkeeper, it's a different kind of perspective. And I would always have that. I would love just to keep the games flowing and everything else. And I, I feel players obviously have that. What kind of possibility of getting injured and stuff like that, and more kind of miles in the legs and all that, which I didn't have with the keeper. It's all about keeping sharp, and you know, you kept at your sharpest by playing games week in, week out, or whatever. So a three week break. You know, for I think from a goalkeeper perspective, it isn't ideal. But in terms of the team as a whole, if you have a few injuries and everything to clear up, it would be an ideal time, really, that three week period to try and get those cleared up and everything else. I know being involved with other teams in different counties that it can be difficult even to get challenge matches this time of year in that three week period or whatever, because the championships in other counties are happening on different weekends and RMAs and stuff like that. So it's very hard to get suitable challenge matches. So that could be a hindrance for your three week break as well, like I'm sure most teams did try to get at least one through there, certainly to perhaps give the boys who haven't had too many minutes on the pitch during the championship to be able to give them a few minutes and everything else. But all those different kind of permutations is up. It's you know, you're trying to get your schedule right for the three weeks and everything else. Maybe hope you had a bit of a bit of fun in one or two one certainly one of those sessions across the three weeks of like the load and everything else. For the guys, for the teams who were involved in championship two weeks ago. Like it was do or die stuff then, it's do or die stuff now, but it was for those teams two weeks ago. And that can that can bring you on to another level, really. Like and, you know, the teams that they obviously all won their their whatever preliminary kind of quarterfinal stage, whatever you may call it, um two weeks ago, like and that's given them a bit of a boost, a bit of a you know, you know, confidence booster into the two weeks leading up to the session and still give them them two weeks to clear up any niggly injuries to have. Like so um, personally I always love just Firing through games. I didn't like the big breaks. You certainly used to get a lot of big breaks whenever you're playing with Arma. And it used to be a month right, between champs and matches back in the day, which I used to think was a bit of a nightmare. Like, but um, club wise, yeah, I know there's a couple of niggly injuries for a couple of teams, a couple of star players, whatever. So they'll take that, that as an ideal opportunity to get those cleared up, get the boys firing, and hopefully hit the ground running on um, yeah, this weekend or whatever. Was the teams that played two weeks ago, they'll feel they have a bit of momentum. Capitalizing that, I suppose, in the opening quarter of the game uh, would be their mindset, I'd imagine. I suppose we'll start just the same as we do every week. Philly will get through the games as they're coming. So, Friday night in Athletic Grounds, it's Bally McNabb against Madden at, I think it's a 7 30 throw in on Friday night. So, this kick starts the weekend of there's crazy action this weekend. There's eight games and three ladies' finals as well. So, um, I'll be flat out, but all attention on Friday night. Bottom McNabb and Madden, it's maybe my best opinion, Philly, but I think, is this the biggest game of the weekend? Is this the hardest to call? It's the one that stood out for me as the kind of, as, yeah, the hardest one to call for sure. Like, and, you know, with Cleveland clans, I suppose we'll get on that later, was the other uh, tie that I felt could go either way or whatever. If we're concentrating on Bottom McNabb against Madden at the minute, the two quality forward lines going head to head and... We'll spoke at length kind of about Bally McNabb's kind of potency up top this year. Like, but the same can be said for Madden, which I touched on previously as well. We did Nigel Grimley now a couple of games or whatever under his belt. I imagine it was a challenge match in the past three weeks. And hopefully, for Madden's sake, the Nell would have got through there, maybe played a whole match, whatever the case may be. If he did get him firing, <clears throat> uh, what I've mentioned also previously is that there's very few players. Any county really that can take a game by the scuff in the neck on their own 
Very class now. Grimley is one of those like certainly in the gym, the gym is really full of fitness and in his in his prime and everything else, like which he has been against on the in the past in a couple of occasions and has literally beat us on his own, be it certainly one championship match in Fredericks, and I remember a couple of league matches that he had as well. So that's a an added bow to their string, certainly if now it's fit and ready. But then you can have all the quality in the world too, and the county certainly up top with Regan's and the young Hughes as well, and you know, Gabby, Gabby McCarn as well. And a couple of goals in the last round as well. So both teams would find themselves, you know, in shape, I'd imagine. Um, Danny Knab probably had an extra fixture that perhaps they didn't want. Um, as a result of their kind of last day of defeat to Levy in the group stage. But again, it was comfortable enough kind of out and against Sarsfields or whatever. So they would feel perhaps that, you know, fairly good pace that they didn't go home, that extra match or whatever. So in terms of we're trying to predict it, that's that's the million dollar question, like. I have a feeling they might go the, the whole way. I'm not sure if there is the extra time of penalties this week, week, weekend, Sean. Like, and replay, maybe, I think, this week. There's a replay this week. Like, so that might be one uh, you put down, perhaps, to certainly go to the last kick of the game. Each team has that firepower up front that they could unleash, kind of, you know, a scoring spree at some stage during the match, which could edge them away from their opponent or whatever. But I see it come down to the to wire, really, in Friday night. Probably a great way to start the weekend, that fixture. And yeah, hopefully that set us up then that could be battling for a, a good weekend of weekend of football in the championship. But certainly uh, when the draw was made, by Nat Madden was the one that stood out for me. And when you talk, Philly, about the forward lines, um, will we see goals this weekend? Is that going to be the big thing for both teams? Whoever can hit the, the sides net, that's going to be the big thing between winning and losing. Yeah, that's that's it. Like, and it's you know sometimes you build. You build these matches up as kind of, you know, the, that the main threat is going to be, you know, in the attacking third of the pitch, whatever else, and then they can nullify each other and, you know, can eat out kind of like whatever, an 8 match or whatever, but I don't see that happening here. These two teams, I think, will both play to their strengths. Those type of scenarios work out whenever a team is more kind of um, fearful, but a bit too respectful, perhaps, of the opposition and not believing in themselves enough. Like, and I don't think that'll be the case for Madden or Bally. Now, both teams, which is, the best part of the fiction will feel as if you know that they can get the better of one another or whatever. So um it's not the case of the Madden be like will be a shock one way or another if whatever team wins. So both teams will go for it, hell for that, right? Imagine it's do or die stuff now. Like certainly I always had the attitude from chance of paying to go for it. Like there's nothing worse of kind of you know, X in the championship with a bit of a whim, like you know, getting beaten nine eight and rated and thinking she's will be had a going at them and you know all the scoring threat we have up front. Try and maximize that as best we can rather than sitting back and trying to get you know, one point victory or whatever. Listen, who knows? That might be the way that uh, both teams might go about it. I, I certainly have no insights in either camp. Like, so um, I certainly, from a, a viewer's perspective, um, I would love to see both teams go at it and play to their strengths, which is their forward line, in my opinion. To do that, I can see perhaps two or three goals for, for each team or whatever, one of those ding dong battles. I think maybe 2020. We mentioned offline there, Sean, that it was maybe 216 to 210 to Madden And, you know, that kind of scoreline does resonate with me in terms of, you know, what could happen this weekend. I know you guys were you know, disappointed at that. That was the COVID year or whatever, first round knockout after the championship final of the year before. So you just probably have that in the back of your head too, like you know, revenge or whatever else that's been petering away there for three years. Like, so, um, you know, I would imagine. Something like that scoreline, perhaps Van McNabb just edging it um, in the 60 perhaps, if not in we could well see a competitive on the weekend, I'd imagine. Yeah, we could be talking about that one next week as well. Philly, you're going for Bally McNabb, I'm obviously Bally McNabb as well, so we'll see how that pans out on Friday night. Saturday then, it's over to Silver Bridge, Cross McGlain, again the Harps, I think it's a 5pm throw in on this. If Bally McNabb on Madden's the hardest to call Philly, no disrespect to the Harps, but is this the easiest to call? Is it? Is this going to be one way traffic because it just seems Cross McGlynn would be too strong for them? You know, it can be an element of that. Like um, Cross are county champions, they're you know moving well so far. They have all the history in the world that you could wish for. You know, everything points to you know perhaps Harps haven't been at the free flowing base whatever else in the championship eight. They'd probably say that themselves. And had a good win against the Peters in the previous round, but he had kind of, I know Peters were playing Finden and stuff like that. So, you know, they get over the line, six points victory as well deserved. 
in the end there. So they have that behind them to give them that bit of confidence boost moving into the weekend. Cross and cross, there's no point in me talking too much about cross and Glenn. Even in the end of many's defeat cross and Glenn in the championship. So I certainly know what that feels like. But last year, probably the last, you know, the last time I played and uh, I'll be playing again, but the last time, this time last year, quarter final stage, we come up against Cross. Yeah, uh, Drummond T we had just been relegated from one uh, A or whatever. Uh, it's not was in the previous round or whatever, but we weren't in the best shape of our lives or whatever. No one gave us a prayer. It cost extra time. Hope we get the other man. They'll be sent off in the in the never open fifteen minutes, I think it was in that match. Like I was I think it was overturned after that. Maybe the goalkeeper had a few words with the umpire that perhaps weren't correct in terms of what he thought might have happened in that. Um, but reminiscent about that. But certainly we had things go our way that night, but we still couldn't get over the line. But in saying all that, you know, Harps can take Harps. I know from speaking to Harps guys in the past, like they really thrive on playing cross in the championship. It really is. And um, you know, if you suppose you can't get up for playing cross in the championship, there's no point playing championship football. Like so invariably you're gonna come up against cross at some stage uh, in the championship. Harps may be thinking, you know, getting across the quarterfinal stage, looking at perhaps last year. They certainly weren't their free throwing best against us in the quarterfinal last year. But game by game, I think it was Mahri then in the semi final. They played like a pretty convincing winners that day and obviously won the final as well. Like, so um, there's a, there was a thinking back in my day earlier. You get cross in the championship together. It never really materialized for, for myself, even though there was occasions where we met them kind of first round in quarterfinals or whatever. And you know, perhaps weren't at that peak because they do then across having that background that beating in twenty finals and I can those days I'm sure they're looking ahead as well and Ulsters and all Ireland's they're looking to peak probably a little bit further in the lane. And so Harps would have that in their back of their mind, hopefully to capitalise on that. And staying all that, it's hard to look past cross really. Like it's certainly the firepower they have up up the clearly really rushing now back there as well. It's you know, they have that real threat going forward they have a bit of solidity in the back as well and you know it's you know I wouldn't say it's a you know there, there's it's championship football so there's always a chance and Harps will go up to his and Silver Bridge then they'll go up and they tight pitch like that like you know kind of nothing to lose then if you're talking to the likes of myself and yourself spear from cross to win they'll go up there hoping to cause a shot um, you've seen bigger shocks in, in the sport world like so it'll be nothing Um you know, nothing to take away from Harps that they can't go up there and produce a result. But all, all kind of, all the kind of kind of predictions that you would see over the weekend, I'd imagine, will will favour the cause to come out. And um, you know, perhaps probably six, seven great winners. So that's the beauty of Champions of Football. Looking at the weather forecast, certainly the way it's going at the minute, like, and um, there's nothing quite like Silverbridge in a wet kind of miserable championship day and like a really fine pitch and all like a few battles there against various teams that, and it is really you know it's it's championship football what we kind of know it as like back in the day it was definitely all around September October time we would have played championship matches because of our man's progress and all our things we seem to play a lot of championship matches in Silver Bridge like it was a real leveller there like especially if it is wet weather and everything else you know, that could play its part, but you know, I suppose, like yourself, I probably favour cross going into it. But you know, hard place we saying write us off with your barrel, like, and maybe go in there and use a shot, that's for sure. And just on the cross firepower, you mentioned Philly, obviously, the likes of the O'Neills and Jamie Clark. Um, I haven't got seen cross playing live yet, so I don't really know how to comment. But Kim Conville just hasn't been putting up the same tallies as last year, and I think that's. That's nearly a bad thing for teams coming up against Cross now because you're just waiting for him to click someday because we know the, the talent and the ability, the scoring threat he carries. So he could, now that's not about football, this is the real championship thing now. So he could he could find form at the right time. That's it. And if I recall last year's match against him in the quarterfinal, Paul Martin marked him that day and marked him particularly well. He's a kind of tight kind of drab counter, I think, that day, which wouldn't have favoured Kane. But uh, from there on, the semi final and final, and really made his mark uh, across his championship campaign last year and end up here year, I think, if I recall correctly. Like, so, you know, it's, as you say, it's championship football. Really, we're in the kind of the business end of the, the season now, really. Whatever happened in the group stage and all, like, boys who are going to step up, well, the real key difference makers will step up now, championship kind of quarter final, semi final. 
playing his games. Like that's when the key personnel need to bring their A game to the table, and you'll find that the kind of not the not the lesser intensity kind of group games. But I suppose there is an element of that now when it gets to the real, you know, do or die stuff like clutch moments and everything else come into play at this time of year. You know, can be oh, I'm sure something a bit who has what the game just like a bit like last year's time of it. But beauty uh, for cross fans is that. Yeah, probably three or four other boys who you know can do similar moments like and that's the key difference between cross and perhaps you know many of the challengers that face them is that the, the other teams have that spread of three or four guys that can produce moments of quality certainly at the attacking end of the pitch can break the difference from the full-time muscle like you mentioned nab and madden the scoring prowess they have planner and obviously with turbo up there and you have be assisted by a couple of other lads cross have that Outside of that, then you know it's certainly uh, you know if I look from the teams that exited the championship thus far, like uh, including Drummond T, like that's what they were missing that extra bit of firepower to get them over the line or whatever. A lot of missed chances in the games I've seen from the was the teams that did exit the championship. That's what was costly. And on the flip side of that, then a few players were able to produce those moments of quality to top end of the pitch when it matters most, not when you're whatever, six, seven, eight, nine points ahead in group stages, or whatever. But whenever it comes down to that we've got in knockout plays or the last minute play stop injury pain, that's when your key person that's going to step up. And that's what I'm sure the likes of Game of Humble will be thinking about this weekend. That's when you know, they train all year for practice and everything else, like and for those type of moments. And, you know, one all it takes it wouldn't matter if you've been off the boil or whatever to this point, all it takes is one moment of, like that to inspire you for the rest of the championship and then suddenly you know, create semi final, great final. It was like, you know, what a what a what a championship game Sean Casey had there. Come on and whatever, done this, that that's the way it can happen. Like, you know, you forget about the group stages come kind of this time of year really because this is when it matters most and you'll find that the players who have that extra bit of quality this will be a stand up. So. so that's where we're both going for cross there, Philly, and um, to get through that one. Then it's on the Sunday double header in the athletic grounds. Clevey and Clan Gale face off at five o'clock and at seven o'clock it's Clan Iron against Silverbridge. So Clevey and Clans, Philly, I know you've seen both these teams um during the group stages on the, the playoffs. Um, we were both at the Clannagy and Drummond Tee game in the playoffs in Cross McLean and I know I was disappointed in Clans. I thought the um they were the better team throughout, but just didn't put up as big a score as I thought they would. Their maybe their big men didn't step up um, when needed, although Supi and, and Shane McFarlane obviously did for you know a ten minute spell to start of the second half, which sort of won the game. They got the penalty and a few points, so um that was the difference in the end. But Clevey, they've topped the group. They they had their their week off, their three week off. They had their one bad day against Mahare. So both teams are coming into this maybe on, on different sides. Clevey having um got a good win over Bolling for now and topped their group. Well, clans they have a lot to improve on from the last day. They do. Um, I suppose we spoke about that in the previous podcast post the kind of playoff stages about clans performance that day. Like I'm looking back. Match itself was particularly drab, like, and you know, Drummond would probably say that, or Clans would probably say, is probably that Drummond brought down to their level, which is probably Drummond game plan to try and get them into a position where they can win the game, which perhaps they were with 15 minutes to go, but just didn't have that firepower we mentioned. We did mention as well those moments, and there was those moments of class um, in Callum and Neil from McCartan that just Drummond he weren't able to produce on the day, but Clans were, and that's what we just spoke about, spoke about there previously. You know, when it mainly came to the crunch part of that game, planning showed their class. Like, maybe been a five minute spell, but it was a five minute spell that was enough to win them the game. Like, and that's all they had to care about. Thinking back to that game, they did have the minor challenge final two years later. So, with all great intentions and everything else, there were minor lads there. <clears throat> we stripped out that day. Whether they tried to or not, kind of put it at the back of their head, it was still there, the minor final. Like, that's a big, that's probably the biggest date. In your head as a minor footballer, like a playing in the minor time to play, and that was only 48 hours later or whatever. So, you know, for them to strip out for the seniors and all this testament to them, but then also the performance they put on on the Monday night against Cross. Like we mentioned, the Callum Neal perhaps had a couple of moments, certainly down the touchline, just beside us where we were commentating your class, kind of in terms of like a Rose Rice kind of player going down the wind. You could see that in the Monday, say, on the Monday night against Cross, and it really was a joy to watch it. And 
that that type of kind of weekend there where you win a playoff to get your senior team through the championship final and then win the minor championship final on the 48 hours later like that's what dreams are made of I can only imagine how much confidence those boys are in going into this round fixtures like they'll feel as if this championship is there for them to be won like and it's a snowball thing really like success breeds success you always hear like and when you're in a winning run be it senior or minors or different in between kind of minor and senior championship matches there the last few weeks you're winning them all and you know, still unbeaten in senior championship plans as well and having that all momentum behind them they're in a serious good place from you know this weekend or whatever on Sunday they really had their two week break as well I'm sure there's a bit of celebrating there for the minor lads um, and rightfully so we'll be able to get back into business perhaps on Thursday night or whatever of that week and all eyes then fixed on Sunday and from Cleavy's perspective then the top of group like which that was the kind of group of death it was mentioned and Cleavy you know ended up top it, which is testament to them like certainly um, against either of the far the better team on the first weekend of the season that was the only time I seen them live or whatever but they'll get a win against you guys by all accounts I think now we're in a better control of that match in the second half, but when it came down to the crunch, and it got to the point there where there's a period during that second half where Cleavy could have found themselves excellent in the championship, he had done scoring difference and everything. There's not many different scenarios going that day. It was hard to keep track, but I'm sure at some stage in that last 10, 15 minutes, there was a, there was a period of time where Cleavy or Peter on the brink being behind for Bannon Nab and Drummond, he beat Mahary or whatever. But they, that was the kind of do or die moment for them and they say they sink or swim there and they kind of propel themselves at the top there to not only big bank now but the way things went then to win the league and or win that group and everything else. So they would have had a real kind of a three week spell here, clear up whatever injuries you mentioned about earlier, but also take a massive confidence boost that in the group of death they finished top and spoke about the quest of Bang Nab and everything else. Mahri in that group too. So Mahri exited the championship Bannon McNabb finished second to Cleavy, so they'll be looking ahead now thinking Clanny Gale as a 1B team this year. Um, you know, they, they'll not be too worried about what happened in minor championships and all Cleavy. They'll be looking solely at Clanny Gale as a senior outfit, looking at their last performance against Drummond Heath, saying that, you know, these guys are here for the taking. And similar to the Bannon McNabb Madden match, it's the kind of fixture that Cleavy and Clans were probably both rubbing their hands with, saying that, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to get this everything in here, guys. So, um, I love when that happens. Like I love being part of that when that happens because you know you're in for a bit of a ding dong battle and everything else. And this was alongside Bannon Nab Madden, the real standout fiction. Like they were first two, I think, drawn out of that. Like it was kind of you know it was, they were the two most appealing then it ended up with. And yeah, it'll be an interesting one come Sunday in the athletic grounds, big wide open pitch. Should you love that? And you know, like McPartland and Callum O'Neill as well. You love running with the ball like this. Fans will see themselves, you know, as this yeah, the Atlanta games is probably an ideal pitch for them, really. And obviously bring back good memories from the minor boys from a couple of weeks ago and everything else. So overall, Cleavy couldn't be much more impressive than the first in the first uh, group stages or whatever. The clans with all the momentum behind them, I think would probably edge it. And you know, people say that's my drum that he had on me as well, which well, might be the case as well. So but Definitely wouldn't surprise me if it, if this would went to the last kicker ball as well. In many ways, the most intriguing fixture of the weekend as well. Bannon now and have that bit of, you know, the real I know the kind of from a I always look at the team's attacking perspectives, like and I love the matchup between Bannon and Madden. But in terms of teams on a, a similar kind of level, Cleavy and Clans will both find themselves to to move into the semi-finals, and that sometimes can lead them to Titanic battle or whatever. Fans will be looking for Drummond Healy or average in 3 12 or whatever a match. Like, they'll be looking to get back hitting those heights again. Whereas Cleavy, you know, maybe maybe getting that listen, you only hit 170 and Drummond Healy should have getting down even further, whatever that's sick. So it's really a hard one to call. Um, fans have that that last match against Drummond Healy that added a wee string to their bow to me. Like, I was. I like, knew the kind of frailty Strummond team might have that day just because of the injuries and everything they had. And that was proving the case. I was expecting a lot more from clans that they didn't materialise, but they got the win. They dug it out. They could have easily lost that match if they had to kind of got frustrated and start giving away silly fouls and stuff like that. They didn't. So that was stand them. And, you know, on the back of that, on the back of the momentum that the whole club has at the minute going forward, and 
already have a minor championship trophy in in the club rooms there. Like I think that momentum might just be enough to edge them then come Sunday Sunday afternoon against Cleavy. I think it's worth saying too the match. I think it was the quarterfinal last year of the match, and it mm. went to extra time. I think Cleavy actually won by a point. I'm a partner and put on a bit of a show that day. I think he scored mm. nine points or something. So if we can get a repeat of that, Clans will be over the moon and that could lead them to victory. But I'm just going to edge it to Cleavy. I think I, I was impressed from the day they beat us. Um, they didn't have Conor O'Neill that day. He he got injured in the warm up, so I assume he's going to be back. He's got a three week uh, break now, so. I think just Kalivi, but again, I'm a bit like yourself, Philly, it could go either road, and it, it should be a really good game, and if it's anything like last year, it'll be really exciting too. Um, So that's the first one on Sunday, and there's Clan Iron and Silver Bridge on Sunday evening, 7 o'clock. Clan Iron, obviously, have been saying it all year, one of the favourites, One that's between them and, and Cross, really. Anybody I've been speaking to, they're the top two teams. And Silver Bridge... I don't really know where Silverbridge are, Philly. At half time, the Green Moor game, you were saying, yeah, they're flying, they're a real top contender here. Mm. And by the, by the end of the game, you're thinking, well, they're just lucky to get through there. Green Moor had a huge second half, really back flying in at Silverbridge. So I know, having spoke to Colin Nally, the Silverbridge manager, after the game, he was happy with a game like that, that they had to get through a dogfight, and they did get through it, which he was hoping would stand to them. But, um, does, does that change our perception a wee bit of Silverbridge? Because they had been putting up huge score lines before that. They put up a huge score line in the first half with three goals. But just Graymoor got at them and Clan Iron will be thinking we can get at them as well. Yeah, and you know, you are banging in the goals. Like, and that always stand here come championship time. Like, that always keep you in the mix. And everything else, like, obviously, Taylor Murphy, they're too flying. Like, and it's, you know, once you're... Once you're hitting the net, that'll regardless of how you're playing, like that'll always keep you in touch or it'll push you ahead, wherever the case may be. Like, it's I suppose not even game by game, almost half by half. It's been hard to kind of be it silver bridge, like um you know, put up great scores, but then remember in the first the very first game of the of the championship they, they didn't score, I don't think, in the in the first half of their, their first match. And you know, last week, the second half against Graham Moore was kind of something similar. So in between all that, they put in some impressive performances as well, though. But like looking back in the Graham Moore match, I didn't that end of things were by you know, you are ahead and be whatever margin you're ahead by when the momentum switches and it's very hard to get that back. Like it's you know, it's you can, but involved with teams at the very top and you know other teams and you think sometimes when you blow maybe a whatever nine point nine ten point lead like Jesus, you know, X, whatever team, they wouldn't let that happen there. But sometimes they do because it's a momentum change that it's such a struggle then to I mean, make that like championship football as well. If if you if you're on the receiving end of a team that's just, you know, probably way more in the position where they're not lose really second half. So just do everything at it. And even last week, if you even go to uh, the under sixteen championship final, Drummond he and St Peter's, like the last ten minutes, St Peter's had nothing to lose. There were six points down, where it was championship final. They just threw everything at Drummond T, like got the two goals, they got the replay and everything else. But the whole momentum for that last ten minutes, Drummond just couldn't change. Like and that's regardless of it's under sixteen level or the top clubs at the senior level. Once your face facing a team that has that momentum and everything else, you can. You know, you go down with injuries, kind of, you know, you see both people from downtown laces and everything else, hamstrings and all this here type stuff. Sometimes that doesn't even work and it can become a wee bit, oh my God, we just can't get out here. But in saying all that, Silver Bridge still found a way to get over the line. It's not worse when you throw away a lead like that and exit the championship, like knowing that you're in such a good place at half time and everything else. That all really builds character, builds resistance, and that'll stand the Silver Bridge going forward or whatever. And I think they'll need it this weekend against Clan Iron. They certainly, if Clan Iron get a period, what an extended period of dominance against Silver Bridge, because Clan Gale will shoot their, shoot their lights out really. Like, and that's the worry for Silver Bridge. Now, their goal getting ability, they would think then hopefully they'll, they'll be looking maybe hitting the net two or three times again, just like they have been doing in, in the championship thus far. Like, and that's probably what they'll need. To make it again, make, if they're going to try and you know, get over the line against Connor and the likes of Herbo up top, like it's you know, it's a pleasure watching him at times, and certainly he's in his element and everything else, and seems in great form in this year's club championship. So they'll have to curtail him as best they can because if they don't, then he will, he will certainly produce the goods, like as we've seen in previous games, both in you know, and with Arm and never mind Connor and this year, or whatever else. 
all things weighed up, you probably have to side with Pan Aaron really um, unbeaten so far in the championship, looking like the main contenders to the county champions cross or whatever. They will see this as you know, playing the athletic grounds against Silverbridge, wide open pitch. Yes, they will be looking to put in a, a good performance, build it into the semi finals or whatever. But Silverbridge will be going there. Remember last year that they had cross rating in the first round as well, like and to the brink, like no one really would give them a pair last year as well. So Listen, it's so we be looking there to call, go in there to cause a surprise, but I, I just feel Pan Aaron will have that too much firepower and too much experience already come chance to um that these quarter final kind of semi final ties, whatever then at this stage. They've been through them, know how to win them, and that'll probably get them over the line um again this weekend. Like I can't see them being comfortable winners or whatever, but I do see them seeing it maybe by three or four points. And you know, as I say, Silverbridge though will Hoping to bang the net really to try and close that gap. Hopefully, get uh, get past Clannard. But um, all things weighed up, I just think Clannard with that extra bit of quality, they'll see them over the lane and get them through the same games. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that, Philly. I think it'll be a tight game. I think Silverbridge will pose real questions to Clannard, but I think there's that bit of experience and a bit of quality up top too that'll get them through. So that's our four quarterfinals, our four senior championship quarterfinals. Um, taking place this weekend. They're all live on Armagh TV too for anybody that can't make the games. So, Philly, thanks very much for coming on and we'll hear Please. from Barry Flynn now and we'll talk about the Intermediate Championship. So, Barry, you're very welcome on to the podcast and we're looking ahead to the Intermediate Championship. There's four games on this weekend and uh, it's all the quarterfinals. One on Saturday and three on Sunday. So a big weekend of championship action. We'll start with the Saturday game. And this is Cully Hanna and Darry Noose in Greymoor at 2pm. So this live on Armagh TV as well. So Barry, um, you've played both teams. Um, Cully Hanna obviously in the league. And Darry Noose in the championship. So you should know both fairly well. Um, Cully Hanna certainly on paper. They seem to be the, the team that... They're the favourites for the intermediate, but Darren Noose have done really well to get to this stage. Yeah, I think Darren Noose, out of the two B sides, probably you could argue have the best form line of Pete Carcrop and Fork Hill, Tully Sarn in the in the playoff round there. Um and they're they're definitely a, t- a dogged outfit. Uh, their league form that six draws in the league this year, so well, they weren't they weren't at the top of the league, but they wouldn't have been far away if they had to turn a few of them around. Both the Cropton game and the Tully Sarn game, they were five, six points down in stages and they just kept plugging away. Um, so they'll not be overawed if if Cully Hanna get a good start. Um, you know, they've been making them comebacks. Cully Hanna, as you say, on paper, probably the strongest team. Uh, but paper doesn't win championships. Um, they're second in the league. I know they're keen to get back the senior, but they'll only get there if they either win the championship or Cullerville win it. And you could argue that they've come through the group stage untested. Really, they won an average games by 13 points. Um, they've been no game now for three weeks. And I know they weren't laying idle at a match last week, but um, challenge games aren't great intensity. Uh, in saying all that, really well-rounded team on paper, the best forward line on show. They'll, they'll look really comfortable playing possession football and if teams drop a lot of men back, they look real controlled um, in that sort of play. Um, it's been about two months since their last real big test, which was at the end of the league. And they lost twice at home to Cullerville and St Paul's, um, which may have been a kick in the backside for them. Um, the manner of the Cullerville defeat won't sit well with them um, and they'll be looking to, to put a marker down for the rest of the championship. However, I don't see this one being the big tester for them. Yeah, I think there'll be a bigger game down the track for them. And I think they'll just have too much um, for Derry News um, and expect Derry News to make it difficult. To, you know, it's a knockout quarterfinal game. Um, they have some handy enough forwards. Conor McNally's been shooting the lights out for them. Shane McNaughton getting in there too. Um, they're not without their threats, but when you see the forward line, Cullianna can throw out there. It's it's um, it's a handful. You need to get your matchups right. And it's it's difficult. They don't have two or three fours to look after. It's it's five, six, seven or eight attacking options for them. Um, I think they'll be too strong on the day. I think that, that's the big thing with this game, Barry. I, I agree with you that Derry News can ask questions of Cullihanna because of their forward line. You mentioned 
Obviously, Conor McNally is the big one. Shane McNaughton, Davy McCreesh. You know, they do have good forwards, but it's whether they can keep the score down at the other end. That's going to be the big question mark here, isn't it? Will be. And then it's even getting <coughs> to get the ball up to them. Why is it? Cully Tottenham have been playing a fairly tall boys at wing back, Tony Donnelly at five, and Barry McConville, who would have normally played around the middle of the field for them. Um, Mickey Murray's been back playing this year at six, keeping keeping things in order for them. Um, and they're tight enough in the full back line. Um, but you know, Sean Connell, who used to play with Armagh uh, in their midfield, I don't know what Perrin Cully will go with, but they'll have Pierce Casey about their real big physical presence and then you've got the legs of Jason Duffy and uh, Ross McQuillan in, in that sort of middle third. Uh, it's just whether if Darren Hoos can win enough possession and probably starve Cully Hanna of the ball and keep it for a long period so that you know they're not facing that attack um, that we're talking about from Cully Hanna, it might give them a chance. Um, but if Cully Hanna get the ball, if Reavy, Shea Hoey, Galvin Duffy, Jason Duffy, Ross McQuillan, um, Aidan Nugent to look after, Kieran McCoy's back from Australia, giving them another string to their boat. Um, Kieran Hoey can mix it if he comes into the play. It's just got so many attacking options that need looked after. And I just don't see uh, the Derry Noose defence holding them out. Yeah, I think that, that's the big thing for me. I think um, we do our predictions, obviously, by in this show. So I think we're both agreeing on Colley Hanna here. Yeah, I'll go for Colley Hanna on Saturday to, to kick the, the weekend off. Yeah, so that's we're both in agreement there. And then on Sunday, there's three games on Sunday. So the first one is Wolf Clones and Pierce Oaks. They play in Mahri at 1 pm, live on Armagh TV as well. So this one, Barry, um, I know he's come up against the Oaks in the playoffs. The, I suppose the big thing for the Oaks is Paul Duffy and his impact and his uh, sweeping, his plus one role, but also playmaking ability as well, like Paul Duffy. Is uh, everybody knows him in the county as a great footballer, he might not have the legs he used to, but he's having a massive impact for the Oaks this year. Yeah, and uh, just not to want to think too much about the game we played Oaks recently, but you know, but uh, Paul played in around the square uh, and just helped them out, shut things out defensively. But uh, he didn't break all the time, but when he did break, he made that made the most of it. Um, Couple of really big scores from for Oaks came off him breaking from from playing that sweeper role, and that's all he needed to to do. Like once they got a foothold in the game, they like to be in front and then play on the break and hit teams on the counter. Uh, and you know, once they got they made the most of the chances, and once they got the lead, then we struggled to to claw our way back into that game. Um, Oaks second half of the season really gave them a lot of momentum. Um, even early on the. It lost a few games only by a lack of points, and they they were in a bit of a rebuild mode. Um, Gareth uh, Thornton would have been under no illusions. Um, that that's that was the remit down there, but um, they're 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 not really young either. They've got experience right through the team, um, which makes them a dangerous outfit. Um, Benny Brady's playing well in the middle of the field, and they've got Paul Duffy. Anto Duffy was really good against us in the playoff game. Um, you know he's been. He missed the early part of the season through injury, so we've been really building back into the team. Um, Rory Duffy's a handful up front as well, so uh, Oaks definitely have the tools to cause people problems. Um, but they'll, they'll want control, they want to play the game on their terms and hit hit tones on the break. Uh, the Tier and Oaks game, which cost them the top spot in the group, Tier and Oaks scored a goal from the throw in, which meant Oaks sort of had to chase the game. And uh, I'm not sure if that completely contributed to the to the result on the day, but. Um, I think the Oaks top in the group, uh, you know, the Oaks not top in the group, sorry, they didn't get that three-week break, but I'd say they'll be all the better for getting that playoff win against Carrick Um, It'll give them a, a boost of confidence, a performance that they were probably looking for for a while, um, and they'll be bouncing into this game um, with their chest out, no doubt about it. Tones, on the other hand, they were only just relegated out of the, the league in 2B, and... Um, I'd say that they'll bring a battle though. You know, they've picked up a bit of momentum themselves. They were close early on and they had a spell in the middle of the league where they had really went off the boil. And then they came back um, to really put up a fight to try and stay in the league. Uh, to top the group with Cullerville in it, you know, nobody would have predicted that. Um, although, you know, Tones were fairly confident going to play Cullerville in, in that last group game that, that they would go and do it. Um, and the, the break, you know, they'll have got time to go and plan for Oaks now. 
Um, I don't think they'll give Oaks the space to go and counter attack into. Uh, I think it'll be a fairly low scoring game and it'll come down to who can win it in the last 10 minutes. Um, but both sides have plenty of experience uh, through the team. And uh, guys that are real vocal, like Tones will have Johnny McCarran playing, uh, Ryan McQuillan may come, come in or start, Jamie Hockey, you know, um, Kaelin Skelton's with them this, this year, uh, Paddy Judge in the four line, boys that are hard enough to handle. Um, whether the Oaks go man for man, I don't think they will. I think they'll, they'll be happy to play the way they did in the previous round, and Tones will probably match that. So um, it could be a shootout in the last 10 minutes or so. We'll come down to that. I think by the way you described the old setting up, um, I think that the Tones is going to set up very similar. They're going to try to mm-hmm. flood the defence and break at pace. So, as you say, they'll maybe try to cancel each other out. It mightn't be the most open, entertaining game, but it'll be intriguing. Yeah, and whoever wins it'll not care how entertaining it is. Um, I just, yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't see why they would move away from that model. It's been successful for them. Um. And both teams will want that sort of counter attack and space, you know, turn the team turn the team over the middle third or even in their own defence and, and go at them and run hard. But um, you know, the, the way to cancel that out is to just to deny that space. So um I don't I don't see it becoming a big kicking kicking game either. You know, there'll be a lot of periods of possession. Um and it'll be intriguing to see who can who can make, make the most of that. Uh, and the, on the Oak side, Rory Duffy is a, a brilliant free taker. He kicked him from range. Um, so could it come down to that? Who knows? But um, Oak, Oak's impressed me the last day. And funny, uh, even before that, someone had asked me pre-championship um, about who was the best team we'd played this season. And I thought Oaks were the most structured team. Um, you know, they're, they're very, they can be very methodical, but uh, they definitely had an explosion of pace against us in the last round. So, uh, it'll be interesting. I think they may pick a team that'll finish the game as well. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll bring on forwards that they think will get scores in, in, the, in the last 15, 20 minutes maybe. Um, and they have a wee, a wee bit of depth in that regard. Uh, and, they'll, and they'll work hard. And this will, I think this will be a real arm wrestle of a match. And who comes out in top favour? Oof. Um, I, think, I think just about Maybe Pierce Oaks, but uh, I wouldn't hang my hat on it. Uh, I think they'll definitely be be buoyed by by their 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 win there recently. Um, I think Tones beating Colville was a bit of a statement. You caveat that with men that Colville wouldn't have had uh, playing. Um, I think I think Oaks are looking, uh, looking really sound defensively. Man markers they have a couple of man markers. Aidan Harney's a real handy player. Andy go forward. Um, Connor McNichol can mark out the field, which is different than a man mark and corner back sort of a role. Um, and they have, I think they have just a wee bit more depth. But when I'm saying maybe Oaks, it's maybe by a point or two. Uh, I wouldn't say it with any real conviction. And I'm sure Peter and and Wolf Tones boys are. Happy enough. I know there's been a, a few bets on on tones with generous odds and Tommy French uh, this week. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's it's real 50-50, So just mix it up while you go with the tones, and one of us one of us will be right. Um, <laughs> so that kicks us off on Sunday. Then it's Tiernog and Katie. This is in Abbey Park on Sunday at two o'clock. So this one just we haven't seen either team yet in the championship far, but. Um, I think the two big things coming out of both teams is the scoring power of Ashton Connolly from Pierre Nog and James O'Hara from Katie, who is the intermediate top scorer so far. So these two boys that could come down to um, which defence handles these two boys best? Yeah, yeah, it could do. Um, Connolly's pace and power are, are really hard to handle. Um, we played Pierre Nog at the end of the league and the, the both games couldn't have been any different. Um. You know, we uh, put up a big score against them at home and then when we went down there, they, they were a completely different team, played with a lot of uh, pace. Connolly hadn't played the first day, but they were just completely different. Um, they have strong physical players. Um, and I don't know whether they have Jordan, Jordan McCoo in midfield. is a big uh, a big asset to them. 
Joe Weir at fullback, very aggressive. Tom Weir are really Tom Weir really impressed me playing at six. Um and they have pace from Zion McKernan as well, who was previously involved with County Under twenties. And Paul Carver's still knocking about. Um you know, if he if he's whenever he's on the field, if uh, Tierney will get a free kick, he's gonna score it. Uh, that's just the way, the way he operates. Um and they have a bit of physicality in the full forward line of um, Big Leo Montero, who played in the the Hogan team for St. Ronan's, I think he played for them as well. Um so uh Tierney and Oog were you know, they went to the top of the group, as I said that they beat um Pierce Oaks away in that last game to go on top of the group. Um but it depends which tier and Oak turn up on the day. Katie kind of remind me of Cropping two years ago, a real young team with coming after winning 2B under the radar. Every round you're sort of thinking, ah, that this will be a step too far. Um, but, you know, they play with no fear. They've obviously got the highest score in the, ter- in the tournament so far. And James O'Hara, um, you know, that youthful exuberance of bring on whoever it is and it's probably working in their favour so um, they're in a great position to go into this probably slightly un- slight underdogs for this game too um, you just wouldn't know what, what way it'll go but if it comes down to a shootout Connerty just haven't seen him in the flesh like, he is very very hard to handle um, if if Katie have a, a man that can go man for man against them um, all the better but I'm not sure that they do uh, although they have some some handy backs. Uh, Jack Malay was in around the county squad for a while. Uh, Shea Harvey's a uh, really handy player too, but I don't know if he would have the power for that Kennedy can bring. Um, so it's interesting to see where Tiernan will play him. You know, he's been out around the half-four lane um, and trying to run odd teams. That's maybe a, they're not allowing teams to maybe play a sweeper or two in front of him. Um, and imagine that he'd be in around the half-four lane again. Uh, in this game, but uh, I, I think that Tiernan Oog, if Tiernan Oog, if the Tiernan Oog team that played against us in the last league game turn up, I think they'll just slightly have too much for Katie. Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement there. I think Connolly at intermediate level, I seen him playing. Um, I think it was his first game back in the league. He played against the Tones and scored one two or one three that night, rattled the crossbar. Just everything he touched turned into gold. So. I think he's he's well. It's obvious to say he's the main man, and if he's on form, he he lead here no to victory. Thus, the the third game, so the last game of the intermediate quarterfinals, bar it's the big one. It's St Paul's and Connaville in Ballymacnab at three p.m. Obviously, the big one. Both teams knocking at the door. Um, in recent years, both in finals in recent years, Connaville lost to yourselves in twenty twenty one. While St Paul's lost last year to Shane O'Neill's in heartbreaking circumstances with a last minute goal. So both teams big hitters, both teams have I sat on winning the intermediate championship, Colorville the League champions, of course. So this has the potential to be a real ding dong battle. Yeah, and both teams that play on the front foot um and have been racking up big scores generally. Um St Paul's top the group. Um and that, that well, the break's not always a great thing. I think the break will have suited them. Uh, Macari was didn't start in the last group game. He only came on, and I you know Oren McGill hadn't played in all the group games, so they'd have had a few knocks that they've probably got tidied up by now. Um, they're a very dangerous side, but they'll, they'll be open. Um, they're not quite six backs and six forwards. Um, the it's not always just that simple, but they will play. With the target man at full forward, and they'll they'll play somebody else in buzzing around that, and uh, their wing half forwards generally play with a lot of pace. Um, and say that if it'll be Mernon or McCampbell, they'll rotate a wee bit, which which is tricky to manage because it offers a full back different styles. You know, everybody knows how good Mernon is in the air. McCampbell go in there and he likes to get the ball out in front and run onto the play. Um, so it can be tricky. You know, it's tricky to pass them men on or, or have swap and then trying to play a different style of forward um, and they'll certainly ask a lot of questions of Colville, Colville's defence um, Colville won the league comfortably enough in the end uh, they also won the minor league title um, I know they weren't delayed, <laughs> delayed over the, the championship at semi-final defeat to cross but you know it's still a good return for them them, them minors actually made a, a huge difference into their senior team 
um, give him a lot of a lot of legs, particularly up the wings. How fit Fergal Nell here or Nell Roland will be will be a factor. You know, they they only came on against the league and it was a real smash and grab. You know, they won that game by five and you're when you're watching the scores come in, you're going, How did that happen? You know, they were dead and buried. Um, but that's the influence Nell Roland has. He's a super player. Um you know, that two years ago he he was the best player in the intermediate championship up, up until up until the final by, by a long way. Um so he's a huge influence on on what Cullerville can bring to the table. Um especially Ryan Garvey being out injured, like I think it's it's nearly immeasurable how important he is to Cullerville. Um really aggressive player, but he can also play ball. Like he's he's um he's a very, very strong midfielder. Um and Cullerville haven't been scoring as heavily as they did in the league, and that's possibly down to the, the amount of possession that he that he would have got and got them going forward. So um both teams plenty of goals about them. Early in the league it was ten nine to St Paul's, but the the last league game they played, Cullerville got four twelve and St Paul's got one twelve. So um even in the groups where Cullerville sort of struggled, you know, with the loss to the tones and the drew with Katie. You know, they got three five against Katie and it's it's not a big score. But St Paul's and that play defensively to try and stop them scoring goals. I think they'll be happy to to have a have a shootout with them. Um and then it comes down to who's got the shooting boots and who can create enough chances. So um it'll be I'd say this game could be a real maybe potential for for game of the round, if not game of the whole championship. So um, we'll see how it goes on Sunday. You mentioned that late game, Barry, I was at it myself, and uh, Roland literally turned the game by himself. He came on, scored 1-1, one, one, and he set up an ass score for Colin Waters. So his influence is obviously huge. Um, obviously, they'd want him to start, but himself and Fergal Roland, I think both came on at the same time. So I suppose in a game like this, where we're, we're calling it, Possibly the biggest game of the weekend. It's such a 50 50. Is uh, how much of a how important is having a strong bench and bringing on the likes of the experience of Fergal Rowland or, as you said, now McCoy come on against Hughes um, for St Paul's? How big is a, a, a strong bench going to be? Yeah, it's, it's it's massive to be able to, to make um, changes and have players that can come on and, and make a difference. Um, you know, it's great to get fresh legs in the last 15 or 20 minutes, but. Uh, the game we played some holes was probably, um, it'd be fair to say it, maybe sneaking away from the MOE bit. McCoy came on and helped steady the ship, um, and allowed Owen or Andrew to go in and play at full forward all the time. You know, there's always one of them in there, um, for Cullerville to play without the two rolling starting, probably a, a challenge for them, um, but to probably say right, we've got we got away with that one. We're through to the next round. I don't think there'll be any holding back um, for this game and, and worrying about, oh, we'll get you right for the next one because there might might not be a next one, you know. Um I have to say see to see Colin Waters back playing is is brilliant. Um uh, and I I've probably said this before, but he's amongst some of them boys from Colorville that don't don't owe their club anything really. Um the amount of service he's given and um, with the injury that he suffered earlier in the year to be back playing um uh, fair play to him and you know, he is dangerous. Without them two boys playing, you'd need him about, you know, for that bit of leadership and a bit of gale. Um now Cullerville forward line fared okay without him, but it's when you get down to these big, big days, um and you know, they will be looking to go, can we go and get an intermediate championship here to, to double up with the league? Um and he'd be very important for them to do that. If Niall and Fergal uh, Roland are anyway fit, I think they'll play. Um It'll be interesting to see just how they match up defensively against uh, the, the fair power that, that Andrew Mernon will bring. Um, Darren Lucky sort of moved back to playing full back this year. It's Rory Garvey who's out injured. Um, I, 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 I thought that, uh, that as the, the year would go on, he might get a, get back towards being fit, but I don't know how far away he would be. Um, and it would be a risk to throw him in first, you know, go on. Winning Mark Andrew there. Um, St Paul, so as well as that kicking attack, they've got the runners, you know, Oren McGill with loads of pace, Anton McFarland has sort of been going to wing back to try and get loose and, and, and drive at, at teams. 
full of running and a very strong lad too. Um, so they've got strings to their bows and poles. And then forwards like Ryan Lawless, Ryan Lawless, we you know, always be mindful of where he is on the pitch because he'd pop up with scores very accurate. So, um, Colville do have a couple of handy marking defenders that might fancy themselves up to line up against some of them. Some Paul's lads, I think the midfield battle has become a huge issue. You know, some Paul's will have a big, a big plus in that regard with McCoy and McConville there, and Andrew probably going out if they need him to. Um, without Ryan Garvey playing, it's just going to be whether Colville can get enough ball. Um, and they have been getting goals. You know, they if they get possession. They're not hanging about and play through the middle third. They'll kick the ball in. Um, they've been doing that all year, and it's it has been paying dividends for them. They won the league. They're in the intermediate quarter final. So, um, I fancy that to continue. Dara Quinn's been having a really really good year for them. It's just whether they can get enough ball to get in get in there and what St Pauls do. I don't think St Pauls leave six v six at the back. I think they'll play someone in to stop that long ball going in. Um. And then it comes down to just who gets the most chances. Like, uh, I know stats aren't everything. The St Paul's game, you know, we had created more than them, but they didn't. They didn't. I like, did three waves in the whole match. You know, it was just um, any chance they got there. You know, they made the, the very most of it. So uh, I don't know. I'm sort of swaying towards St Paul's game without loads of conviction and Colville of um, a habit of proving teams teams are wrong. Um, but I just think with the injuries, they need to be at the top of their game to win this game. Um, it's, this is a big one. Um, and outside of Colleyhanna, it's whoever comes out of this game will be up there for the favourites for the for the championship. So, um, it'll be a, it'll be a great one to watch. Um, looking forward to seeing it. I just have a sneaking feeling for St Pauls this weekend. Yeah, I, I go on as well, Barry. I think. Um, just even thinking back to two years ago, the match, I think in the quarter final, and Colville won, and I can just remember Ryan Garvey's influence that day. He kicked a couple of great points at the end, and he had such a big influence. So I think his impact missing this week is just, it could be too big for Colville to try to replace. So I go with some Pauls on that one as well. Um, I suppose just before I let you go, boy, we've got um, predictions on all the games so far, but in terms of the overall championship, it looks certainly like Cully Hanna or the team to beat. Do you go along with that or who do you see winning on the Intermediate Championship? Yeah. Uh, on paper, yeah. <laughs> like I said earlier, but paper's just not always the way it goes. Um, I've watched Cully Hanna a few times this year. Um, they beat Pierce Oaks at home right, well early on, but Oaks had a man sent off early on. And... Um, Oaks could be Oaks could be troublesome for teams. Um, I just think they're they're really well structured, well organized. Um, don't have the forwards that Cully Hanna would have, but I think if you can get a team that's defensively well enough organized, um, it'll ask questions of Cully Hanna. But uh, whoever comes out of St Paul's Cullerville again could cause problems. Cullerville, uh, Went and beat Cully Hanna in their own backyard to, to essentially win the league. Um. Uh, so Cully Hanna have still got questions to answer for me. Um. Well, are they capable of answering them? Yes, but they need to bring their A game. And if if Cully Hanna play to the best of their ability for the rest of the championship, they'll win the championship. Um. But it's up to them to go and do it. Um. Papers. Paper doesn't refuse ink, as as they say. Um. <laughs> But that's not the takeaway. They're, they've got some really, really super players. It's just if they can get them all motoring in the same way on the same day. Um, but they'll be a handful. Like, be hard to look past them. I think it'll obviously be easier to predict come Sunday evening when we're down to the final four. But Barry, great to have you on. And three of those games will be live on Arma TV. Tier Nogan Katie. Um, won't be. It'll there'll be deferred coverage of it. So for anybody that can't get to them, they'll be on Arma TV. Barry, great to have you on. Great to hear your thoughts. Um, just a, a big thank you to Capture Athletic before we go for coming on board as the podcast sponsor for the duration of the championship. Barry, great to hear from you. I'll hopefully have you on again in a couple of weeks' time. No bother. Thanks, Sean.